Welcome back to News Channel 8. Couple of uh, problem spots to be on the lookout for folks starting off in Oldsmar Lake St. George south of Tampa Road. A collision also one over here in the Sonona Sassa area that's been tying up lanes. US 301 right at Fowler Avenue and it looks like that should be wrapping up soon. Meanwhile on the interstate we're looking very good in Pinellas County but as you get off the interstate and near 275 in St. Pete we've got some issues going on. We've been following some breaking news about some shootings there. Melissa Beckman's been updating us throughout the morning. Right now the intersection of 31st Street South and 18th Avenue South is completely blocked. You won't be able to get by there due to police activity. So take 22nd Avenue South. That's your good alternate in the area. Let's move over now and also talk about another closure here. If you're traveling southbound on 28th Street from 7th Avenue South to the interstate, it's closed. So take 22nd Street and uh, that'll be another good alternate. So again, 22nd is the key there. Also, we've got a collision 5th Avenue South at 49th Street. Let's get a quick update of our camera. Pull out the camera. You can see what I'm talking about in this general area. And this is the ramp. Now it was closed down here. This is the ramp from southbound 275 exiting to 28th. You can see that we've got one vehicle exiting to the left, but you cannot turn right there. So keep that in mind as well. That's a look at the roadways. Back to Rod and Gail. The stone crab season is shaping up to be a bad one across the state. The season started in October and it runs through May 15th. Local fish markets, local restaurants have had to raise their prices on this Florida delicacy because of a uh, decline in supply. A fish and wildlife researcher says the reason stone crab traps aren't as full this year range from warmer water to natural predators. We're struggling to get them, and so obviously that hurts our bottom line in the end. Once we come off a few good years, we do have a downslope, you know, a few couple years of bad fishing, and I think that's what they're seeing now. Some local fishermen are finding ways around the bad season by catching extra blue crabs instead. There are reports of other fishermen across the state just pulling up their traps altogether for good because they say it's just not worth their cost to try to catch them. This morning, a Hillsborough County school is dealing with a rat problem in its cafeteria. Plant City High School's kitchen will be closed all week while the cafeteria is treated for rodents. Students will have to bring their lunches for the time being. Hillsborough County school officials say sometimes this happens in a district that has 260 buildings. A uh, first of its kind catch off the Florida Keys. You have to see the picture that, that you're looking at is actually a two-headed bull shark fetus that was removed from its mother after being caught by a fisherman. Now, according to researchers, it is highly unusual, the, a phenomenon, and the first known kind of its case anywhere. Ah, uh, Puxatawney Phil, you're off the hook this morning. Can dig a little deeper in your hole there because you're not going to jail. All right, it's all because of that early spring forecast. Well, it turns out Phil's handler says, I blew the call. There is no shadow to see in early spring for you and me. I made the wrong call. Uh, I'm sorry for the mistake that I made. Maybe someone handed Bill Dealey the wrong scroll because he says he somehow misinterpreted Phil's message. And with that admission, the Butler County prosecutor is ready to bury his feud with Poxitani Phil. He indicated the uh, groundhog, but it is now letting him off the hook. Ain't that nice? The handler for Poxitani Phil stepped up to the borough and took full responsibility for the groundhog geese that he misinterpreted. I don't think it was too cold and I didn't have anything to drink either, so I, I can't blame it on that. That would be indicted, by the way, the groundhog. The prosecutor says some people didn't get that this was all a joke. What? <laughs> so not all this response has to be positive. He wants to make it absolutely clear that the joke played out on his time, not on the county taxpayer's dime. Well, that makes me feel better because I thought there was going to be a It's case. hard being a groundhog whisperer. I thought they were going to bring in little handcuffs. <laughs> well, guess, let me tell sets. you, it was certainly wrong because there's nothing early spring-like about freeze warnings at the end of March. We're usually talking about warm weather. I mean, Citrus, Hernando counties, you remain under that freeze warning until 10 this morning. We have a frost advisory for Highlands County. And if you want to track these cold conditions along with us, download our free Weather Max app and you'll see a lot of sunshine all day. Just not much of a warm up from 40 degrees at 7 a.m. to about 45 at 9. We make it up to 52 at 11. So even as you're out at your lunch break, the jackets will be needed. 
58 degrees at 1 p.m., 64 degrees at 3. Now that is slightly warmer than yesterday, and an added bonus, it's not going to be as windy as yesterday, but it's still really cool for this time of the year. In fact, Carolyn Carroll and our weather watcher there checked in cool right now at 40. We're down to 28 right now in Homosassa. Can't believe I'm even talking about that. 39 degrees in Brandon right now, 38 in Auburndale, 45 in Sarasota. And if we thought yesterday morning was cold, well, we're even colder this morning by 11 degrees in Plant City. Six degrees colder in Tampa than we were this time yesterday. 12 degrees colder in Bradenton. I mentioned those winds. You'll still feel a breeze today. Now, it'll come from the north. It'll add that kind of chill to the air, but it's not as strong. 13 miles per hour in Clearwater right now, five miles per hour in Tampa, about seven miles per hour in Winter Haven. And it's coming out of the north, so it's bringing that cold air right on down the peninsula. It is a dry air though, and that's why that cold air just continues to spill in. Now around an area of high pressure, you get clockwise winds, and that's why we're seeing on this eastern side of it, the cool uh, air flowing south. Well, as high pressure builds in overnight, our winds continue to calm down, and that will lead to another very cold start to Thursday morning, possibly near record levels again. But as high pressure heads east, our winds start coming from the east to southeast, and that finally warms us up. Today, though, north to northwest winds, 15 knots on the water. 65 for high in Lakeland, 64 in Tampa. We'll hit 65 in Sun City Center. Check out lows tonight, 34 in Inverness, 33 Brooksville, 42 in Tampa. And then that slow warming process does take place. So if you're here in town, you know, I know it was a little cold yesterday, but you'll generally see a warming trend. And without that wind, it'll feel a lot more comfortable with the bright sunshine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. It's 651. We have an update on some breaking news out of St. Petersburg this morning coming up in about three minutes. You're watching News Channel 8 today.